First off, guys, I'd like to thank everybody for checking in here. My name is Jamie Shaw. I am the owner of the Absolute Basketball uh, brand. Uh, we do Coach's Corners every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, very excited uh, to have Coach Barefoot here uh, talking today about building your brand. Uh, for those of you who might not know uh, Karen Barefoot, she was the uh, first player, male or female, in NCAA basketball history, scored 2,000 career points, 1,000 career assists, uh, assists. Uh, first player in the history to lead the nation in the same statistical category for four years in a row, which was assist. Uh, she has 353 head coaching career wins, 16 career winning seasons, um, eight postseason appearances. She's coached eight All-American players, four players of the year. The list of accomplishments goes on and on and on. That's why I'm super excited for her to be on today, for y'all to listen and, and to learn about building a brand. But the University of North Carolina Wilmington head women's coach, Karen Barefoot, please take it away. Well, thank you, Jamie. I think I should sign you up for my agent. So, <laughs> but no, I am super excited to be here and, and, and glad everybody can make this call. I'm very passionate. So I hope this conversation, you know, at the end, we just talk because today is about you all. Um, but I also have a guest too with me. I've got my um, recruiting coordinator right here, Roman Tubner, if everybody can wave Roman in here. And he's put together some uh, cuts uh, video cuts, um, because once we talk about branding, okay, we're going to talk about how you take your brand and then how does that carry on to the court, but you can't get onto the court until you talk about branding. So what I want to do right now is I want to kind of talk a little bit about my background so you have an idea about me, because I've been blessed to really coach at all levels, and I'm just going to kind of share this with you. Um, so we can uh, just, just have a little conversation about my background and how I got started and all that good stuff. So anyway, uh, I think that it's important to know who you are and your players to know a little bit about you. Um, I've coached 25 years and I fell in love with that orange ball. Um, he already summed it up. I mean, I've had a lot of wins and, and di been different places. Um, but most importantly, it's, it's about serving our student athletes and being able to I'm so passionate about teaching and reaching every day. So I know that, you know, sometimes people get caught up in championships and things like that. But for me, it's truly about just making a difference. So I'm not going to kind of go through my background. I'm going to speed it up a little bit since uh, Jamie did a really good job kind of talking about what I've gone through in my journey of, of coaching. But I do think you need to know this. I was that little kid who fell in love with it at six years old and never thought in a million years that I would be the first player to score 2,000 points, 1,000 assists. So my journey and my call in life truly is the lady of first. Um, I don't know what people think about you or what, you know, when you put together your story and who you are, because we all have a gift. Um, and I think that the players need to know who you are and where you came from. You can't skip that. And so for me, I kind of just talk about someone who was humble and hungry and was able to accomplish something at an early age, at uh, 22 years old, um, you know, and, you know, three-time three All-American, three-time ho Hall of Famer, because sometimes you got to put them in their place a little bit. <laughs> you got to let them know, I'm, I, I'm pretty good, you know, too, you know, because I think sometimes this generation nowadays gets that head like, oh, I'm everything. But um, I started coaching right after playing, and as you can see, I've, I've, I've done a lot of firsts. So I'm proud to say that I coached my first job at Division Three. And then I got into Division Two, and then I, I coached three Division One programs, and I've loved every single level. I've loved it all. I, I really have just embraced the opportunity, the challenges. Um, and so what I say, I guess because my last name is Barefoot, success leaves footprints. And so my philosophy is I want to leave footprints wherever I go. That truly, my journey is not about me. It's about where I go and how I can put my vision in place and how I can do something pretty special for those student athletes and how I can incorporate my philosophy and, and talk about standards and, and branding and how the culture starts, you know, come into place when you start talking about that. And I'm going to get into that in a minute because I'm going to talk about the lessons. I'm going to share with you some stories and talk about lessons because, you know, in basketball, you all know that it's good, bad, and ugly. So it's never, ever perfect. Your journey is never going to be perfect, but the journey is, is what you make it. And so I always say success leaves footprints. Um, if anybody knows me, they, a high school coach back in the day gave me that 
the uh, capture of Red Bull. That was, that was my thing. They were like, who's Coach Barefoot? I'm Red Bull. I'm, I'm, I'm just energy. I mean, yes, I don't have a bad day. I'm sorry, I don't. I, I love life 24-7. Um, you know, I always say my players are going to lead the nation in high fives and floor burns, two things that don't show up in the stat sheet. Um, I always say dreams don't work unless you work. So I'm always going to talk about work. And my championship DNA, my five starting lineup words are these. You got to have great leadership, got to have some talent, got to have that winning culture, that winning attitude, the winning desire that every practice, every goal, things like that. It's that winning competitive edge. You got to put that in place. The standards you, we live by on and off the floor, you can't go below the standards. That's academics, in the community, all that. You've got to have high standards. And one person can't go below it, or you're not going to have that championship lover, level play and then of course the biggest thing I think is family atmosphere family is everything to me you know and, and again it, it's about a bunch of sisters coming together or brothers coming together for one common goal and to have each other's back is it going to be perfect no it's not going to be perfect but in the day you're trying to get them to play together as one they're in their foxhole playing defense together their early help they're rotating they're getting after their floor burns boom they're high-fiving good and bad so my five things that I have lined up in the locker room, our assistant coaches' offices, we talk about these things. And every day we echo those things. So you can't forget about the little things that are so big and, and branding a program. And so my five championship rings are, and we say this all the time, number one, always, if you want to get that ring right there, you always got to do the right thing. So to me, it, it's really, really important that when you're branding, that that's number one, that, you know, like there's no shortcuts, there's no temptations, there's no like players getting away from little things. It's always doing the right thing. It's A before B, it's academics before basketball. That's important and it's gotta come from you when you're branding. Um, the second thing is becoming a person of value. You know, like everybody on that team is important. Everybody, the manager, everybody. Everybody on that team, everybody within the team, the people who even mop the floor. I'm going to talk about branding in a minute. People who come in and clean the locker rooms, the people that are around you, everybody has value and it brings it to the program. And you've got to celebrate everybody because to me, to me when you're building a culture, a winning uh, team, that everybody's got to be important. And so I keep talking about that value piece. The third is you got to practice courage by taking ownership of your dreams. And courage is having the ability to do things when you're uncomfortable, you know, to go to the free throw line when the game's up, down, doesn't matter, and being able to knock two free throws down under pressure for your teammates. And you have to, you've got to simulate that in practice, even though it's not going to really be like that in the game, you've got to practice courage every single day. You know, you've got to practice courage right now in this coronavirus. You know, you got to practice them getting up, get going. I mean, everybody talks about the freshman 15, but we don't want the COVID 15. <laughs> you know, we don't want these kids coming back extra plus 15. So it's just being able to have that courage to do things that maybe aren't so, you know, like what they want it to be. And so getting them uncomfortable. And today is the biggest thing. The core value of the championship rings is right in the middle. You have to create your brand because it is your brand at the end of the day. It is who you are. You don't waver from it. You've got a championship staff. Everybody's an All-American at their role. Everybody's giving you, the, the leader, what they need. And even if the, the, it's just a little thing, it's the little things that matter. So when you're creating a brand, everybody's got to buy into it, okay? And I heard this recently when I got invited to speak to the NCAA, which I was privileged to do. And I heard one of the athletic directors get up there and he says, Either your staff is all in or they're in the way. And if they're in the way, they got to go. Are you going to have a conversation? So all in is something that is important when you're creating your brand. Okay. And then the fifth one, which I think is more important, who really truly is me, is the random acts of kindness. You know, I was that little kid that – no matter what, I'd open the door for a senior citizen. Um, I was a kid that would never let that, that kid get bullied in a class. 
You know, I always stuck up for that person. I was a kind person. Yeah, I was a great basketball player. Yeah, I was funny. Yeah, I did this, I did that. But in the day, I think it's, you know, who do you want to be? What's your legacy? I want to be known as a kind person that served and helped others. Like, I love being on these calls. Because being on these calls, if I can help one or two people or they can steal one or two ideas away from me, then that makes me feel good. And with my program, that's the things that we talk about. Because in the, the day, it's about them going out in the real world and giving their gift back and helping others. So we talk about our coaching philosophy, and Coach Rose is going to talk a little bit about some things that we do. It's we have to talk about why we do things. You can't get away from it. I think sometimes we get so caught up in a in a play and a back screen and a shot and this and that. And we get all hyped about things with X and O's, which I do love that. Don't get me wrong, but you got to be able to accum uh, communicate with your, your student athletes, and you got to be able to tell them why we do things. Because every scout could be different. You get hurt, you're changing a game plan, something happens, and all of a sudden, it's different. And some people can't adapt to change. So the communication is, hey, this is why we're doing something. We need you to do this. Oh, we need you to rebound the ball better. Oh, we got to get you to do this. And so, I think that it's really important for them to see your vision when you're branding. And again, you're always going to go back to your philosophy, which we say high fives and floor burns, teamwork, and we talk about the teal collar way, the teal collar way. So I know this is a funny little thing, but I'm going to go into some of my stories here. But when I, I was the first player, male or female, like, like the, you know, Jamie said, but, you know, I had no idea I was going to even accomplish this until I did it. And I thought I was Michael Jordan with the tongue out. I, had, I was a kid with the knee pads and the headband. Everybody made fun of me because I wore my knee pads. Back in the day, wearing knee pads, people made fun of. But I'm going to tell you a quick story. Boo Williams, who I played for, I'm from Virginia. He said for me to make his team, I had to do something different to be on the team. Like, I was, like, at the point where I was about to get cut. And I said, I want to be the ultimate teammate. Tell me how I can do this. He said, then I need you to take charges. I need you to get on the floor and win the 50-50 loose balls. I need you to be that work person out there. We could take we – could, we could utilize we – could, we, could, we got – there's a need for that. So I took that personal, and I did that. And I was able to play for Boo, and he inspired me, and I was able to do good stuff in high school. And I carried that on to college – and didn't know that I would accomplish something like this, which led me to the first story coming up. So my first story is I'm 22 years old. I have been handed, this is 25 years ago, an opportunity to either start a program from scratch at a Division Three program where my grandfather went, my uncle went, my dad went, or play professional in Sweden. Now, most people today will be like, oh, I'm going to play pro. I'm going to do that. I want to write that down. But for me, it was a deeper purpose. I, I felt like I was the teammate that I led the nation four years in a row. I love seeing people complete plays. Like, my vision is I love seeing people score the basketball. So I had this vision of helping others. And so – I thought about it, I prayed about it, I reached out to Pat Summit, and I was like, why not? I mean, she probably will never call me back or write me, and she did. I still have her letter in my garage hanging up in my little entertainment room, and I, I tell people all the time, when you want to be something, you'd be amazed by people who really write you back and call you back because they really do want to help you. But she wrote me back, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. So with the help of others and you know, Wendy Leary and Ann Donovan, some people that were mentors in my life, I started to go the coaching route, which I got my first opportunity to coach. So I thought about this for a second. I don't know how many of you have wrote down your philosophy and kind of branded it, branded it. I know we talked about the ch championship rings, the things that you have to do that, that you don't waver from, but daily in your program, what are the things you're going to talk about? Well, I know for me, I talk about, I want, I want my players to learn every day. Learn, 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 be a sponge. Next play mentality. Let it go, let it go. Learn, you didn't make that one, let it go. Next play, next play. So I wrote down learn. The next one I said was, okay, well, they got to overcome adversity. I mean, that's just a fact. 
If I'm gonna start building this program from scratch and never want a program, I've gotta teach them how to be mentally tough. Simple as that. And then visualize with something I said, hey, I wanna build this program and I wanna build it to a championship. What I didn't realize at the time was we weren't in anything and I, I, I ended up getting into like a national college, small college um, program which allowed us to compete at a national level. And I went to my athletic director and said, I want to win a national championship. And he goes, you're crazy. We need to first build the program. And I said, that's my goal. And I said, at least I'll grow into it. Um, and so he just thought I was this kid that really had this passion. He was like, okay, let's back it down. She sees something. All right, we'll make the steps and try to see what we can get. So I think being visualized, you got to be able to see where you want to go and then kind of grow into it. And then, the last one, I said, expect nothing, give everything. And when I wrote these little things out when I was 22, I didn't know that each one letter and, and the words felt love. Because you do got to love it enough, and you do have to have that love, tough mentality, not that tough love mentality. You got to be brick strong, love tough, to be able to do something you love if you want to build and win a championship or get your brand going. And so those were the things I started off. And so my lesson is this. Here's one slide. I'm 22 years old, baby. I got a $7,000 salary full time all year. Okay. I have no experience. I lived at home with my mom and dad. Did not tell my players. I lived at home with mom and dad. I was like, oh, yeah, I got this big house. But I, I didn't want my players to think less of me. So I, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to tell them, you know, I had a P.O. box separate so they didn't think I lived there. And I, we didn't have a locker room. So we had to change in the bathroom, start the program from scratch, buy new uniforms, I mopped the floor, I drove the vans, I grew the budget, fan support, I grew, grew a belief. I, I, you know, all this stuff, I had this vision. So I started the program with six players. And I'll never forget, I thought I was gonna nail this one player, this recruit, and everybody, kind of, I tell the story over and over, and my athletic director, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't get this one recruit, we're not gonna win. And my athletic director at the top of the slide, who recently I was inducted to the first Hall of Fame in school history this past year, and there he is. He gave my first opportunity. And we got to take pride in people who give your opportunities. He gave my first opportunity, and he would tell me, Karen, or Coach Barefoot, because a recruit said no to me, and she moved on and signed somewhere else. He said, when they say no, you say next. And you can't get too high. You can't get too low. you got to keep on moving. you got a team. And I took that in consideration. And so I took a team of six players and my first ever win, we fouled out. Two players fouled out. So I'm now down to four. So now I'm building a box. What y'all in? Box, 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 you know, because that's all I, you know, that's all I had on the team. And I got my first win and won by two points. In the, in the story of this whole thing, it was a great experience. Six winning seasons, three Final Fours. We won the school's first ever national championship in 75 years. Um, and I never thought I, I could do such a thing. So when you're branding and stuff, you got to be tunnel vision of, okay, I know I'm going to set a big goal, but I'm going to grow into it. And it may take me some time, but I'll get it right. So... The next one I want to talk about, too, is, is practice courage. I got another story, too, and I'm going to let Coach Rowe jump in in a minute. And you guys can always ask questions. Um, so I won a national championship not even knowing about, you know, what was next. And, I, and they wanted me to come back. Now I'm going from 7000 to really making some money now, okay? And I'm like, even though it's not money, they don't want me to leave. Um, so now I get a call from Lenore Ryan University, Division Two. So I went from Division Three to Two. Now we're still talking about branding. They had never won before, never won a championship, never done anything. Like they literally, when I went to the interview, um, their attitudes were, they, they didn't care. They, they really truly didn't see a vision. Um, but there was this one kid that just stood out to me and it just, it just takes one person. Her name was Ma Grady. And she's, she's so passionate, she's like, coach, man, we've had so many problems with this program. I really, I, I, got, I can do this, you, you know, come in here. So I literally listened to that one student athlete and I was like, okay, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna start a new quest of, of building this program. So when I went there, 
I had my whole thing of, okay, whether you think you can or can't, you're right. We've changed the culture. We've changed your attitude. We believe in faith over fear, the John Gordon stuff. And I said, I said, Nancy Lieberman was a, my idol growing up. That's why I wrote, that's why I wore number 10. And I got my jersey retired number 10. But one thing that she would always tell me is, say it, see it, be it. And you put that vision on a vision board. So I told Maya, I said, Maya, you might be the only one who believes in me, but you and I together are going to get this whole team working their tails off. And we're going to, we're going to outbeat, we're going to outwork people. We don't care if they're taller, faster, we're going to do this thing. So, and talking about practice courage, our first championship, we were down to get our first championship. We we're down four points, four seconds. And Maya is in the back. And I always say, everybody do your role. I literally subbed in a player, um, number five, who never played before. She was she had two left feet. But my God, she could jump the hell out of the damn gym. I mean, she was a freak athlete. And boom. I mean, she could literally touch the gym. And I put on the team just a rebound, like a Dennis Rodman. I was like, hey, if I need a rebound, I told her in offense, don't pass her the ball. Lord, how mercy. But I knew she could rebound. So we made the first free throw. They sprinted it over to me in a huddle. And then all of a sudden, boom. We're like, they're like, coach, let's, let's work on that play the other day in practice. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When you practice courage by taking ownership of your dream, when you practice things in practice, they can at least simulate a little bit. We actually went over this play in case we had to intentionally miss a shot. Well, we were playing a team that was number one in the nation, Presbyterian, and field goal, uh, free throw percentage. So when you're doing the math there, we're like, hey, we're going to make the first free throw. We're going into the huddle. Maya say, we're running that play because we did it in practice. So the practice, practice, practice. So Shay, number five, gets up there. Casey, who worked on it, potentially missed the shot. Shay hits it back. I mean, oh, she's way ahead above everybody. Hits it back to Casey. Casey gets it at the free throw line and hits number two, Lanika Williams, in on the wing. And Lanika at the time was bit over talking to me like the game was over. You know, it was a disguise. So she was like this, because I'm big on inside coming to the ball. So Lanika's like looking at me. So as soon as Casey gets it, she opens up her numbers, takes a one, two step. Boom, we nail it. We knock it down. We're tied. We go to overtime. We win. We first time in, in school history going past that round. We go to the semifinals. We win by two. We go to the championship game. We win by two. We're cutting the nets down. Th these kids believe, believe, believe. And it all came down to courage and free throws. It all came down to those teams understanding that, that you've got to take courage. So when I'm talking about branding and things that you do, you gotta, you got to work on the courage part. you got to work on the mental toughness part. You got to work on those things. Um, so the next thing I went to was Elon. And I had to build their program. They had never won. They never had 21 season, never won a postseason play. And we talked, we talked about attacking dreams, attacking dreams, being a shark, not a goldfish. And John Gordon says that you can be a goldfish and swim around in a bowl all day long and wait for somebody to feed it. Who wants that life? Who wants that boring life? Or you could be a shark, go after it and go for the kill, whatever, get knocked down by waves and get up. So we had that mentality. End of the day, we did it. We made history. We did it. We sure did. You got to have a power three, though. You got to have a post. You got to have a point guard. And you got to have a shooter. So I, I, we'll talk about branding and that in a minute with Coach Rowe. And you got to be patient. But it worked. The first year was a little slow. But then we got into building the championship. And then I went on to Old Dominion taking over a historical program, you know, had, had not academically, you know, and again, we don't, when I take a program over to build or resurrect, I, tr I will never go back and talk about what happened. I don't ever want to point the finger and give excuses. My thing is just coming in the right way and doing it the right way. So I came in trying to clean up some things, you know, talked about, you know, academics, A before B, basketball community, character, having a voice, doing the right thing, being a person of value, expect nothing, give everything. We talked about those things. No vampires, as John Gordon was saying. We talked about those things that you went in the locker room, coaches, staff had to come in and have that whatever it takes attitude. And we did. 
and we had some major upsets. But the most important thing for me is I think that we did it the right way. And how we did it was, if you can see, like I've had some, you know, Jenny Sims got drafted second round, um, you know, had a, over 103. I had my, you know, I was lucky to have my coaching name on the floor for 100 wins, things like that. But this picture says it good up the top. And I don't know if you can all see it, but when you build relationships and you keep them, you hold them accountable, accountable. This, this one in particular, and I can tell the story, I had to suspend her for a few things and a couple players here and there. When you do that, you come out on top because you know, no one's taking shortcuts. You're building something special. And then all of a sudden, everybody knows that, you know, hey, you are doing the right thing. You are out work, working people. As you can see the bottom of the screen, you're talking about branding. We're the first sellout in school history. We'd have not close to 9,000 people. That's what our capacity was at the Ted Constant Center. People were loving the brand. Players were out in the community having a voice. Assistant coaches were talking about the kind of players that we bought in the program. All of a sudden, people were, you know, wanting their season tickets, doing this, doing that. So branding is a part of bringing everybody together and building relationships and making people understand that it's, it's, it's okay. We're, we're here to teach and reach players. Even if Jenny is a draft pick, second round of this, for that, we still got to do our job every day to do the right thing. And my last story, and I'm going to keep this, hopefully I'm not talking too long because I am so passionate, um, is, is passion with purpose. And this is a really special uh, story here. And, and this is currently where I'm at now, okay? And so UNCW, three years ago, I took over this program where my father, I had a lot of barefoot roots here. My father was born here. My uncle was born here. Uh, my aunt was born here. Even though I'm a Virginia girl and grew up Virginia, all that, you know, Wilmington has been a special place. It's been a special place on my dad's side. Um, so I kind of came in with a thing of they've never won a championship, okay? And, you know, wanted to make sure that we kind of like, you know, put that, 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 that jersey on and, and really started representing the power behind that jersey, which is every single player, you know, is the fact that everybody has a gift. And I, my job was just to get it out of them. So my first branding story with them was you know, sitting around a meeting is like, all right, you know, everybody, tell me a story about you, okay? Tell me your hero, your hardship, your highlight. Talk about the things. I want to get to know you. So when you're branding and you're trying to, you know, put everything in place, you also want to build your team where everybody understands one another. That, you know, Jenny DeGraff was a great shooter. And I know she's on this call and she just finished up her grad school at Boston College, which did an amazing job this past year after leaving the program three years ago, is the fact that everybody is important on that team if you want to build success. And I think that what you do is when you ask those questions, you get people getting excited and you get people talking about something that was hard for them and what made them who I am they are today. And even for like someone like for me, I mean, I was, I had a hard time growing up because my parents were, sep were separating. So I, I turned to that orange ball, which I thought was important. And then, you know, just talking about a highlight, getting them to brag about themselves. And we talked about the bus, the energy bus. We, we, we made that our story. We talked about the teal collar, teal collar work ethic and the energy and effort and enthusiasm that they had to bring every day. And what's great about this whole story is when I first came in and I talked about all these players I did not know when I was my first workout and tryout that Lacey Suggs was a walk-on and I said this this one right here is is the, the hardest worker I have ever seen in my life we're gonna do this we're gonna do that well as soon as I got in that meeting the trainer and everybody was like kind of giggling and I looked at them in the tr my staff they're like coach she's a walk-on I said, I don't care. She's first on rebound and drill. She's first on sprint. She's this. She's taking a charge. She's doing that. I mean, I started getting like, you know, like that. We're going to passion with purpose. Like we got, like, we're going to build this thing with, you know, some of the things that she can do. Well, long story short, y'all, three years, she's, you know, went from walk on to scholarship to all conference to all state to captain to four years to MVP to scholar athlete of the year this past year. So, you know, building something. Sometimes as coaches, we, we got to pay attention to people, not just that it could just put the ball in the hole, but some of those people that do the dirty work that really makes your team really, really successful. So we're building a winning tradition here. You know, we're, you know, winning and we're trying to build that and we're trying to make history. 
And so in our locker room, we talk about those kind of things. So I'm going to stop right now because I've kind of talked a while and talked about some stories here. And I'm going to let Coach Rowe talk, bring some video and, and the kind of what we talk about within our program. And he's going to give you some um, information that we do in, in our program that might help you all. Hey, how's everybody doing? Good, thanks. Good, Good Coach. Good. I hope you Good. are. Oh, yes. Uh, my name is Roman Tubner. So I'm the recruiting coordinator, assistant coach um, for head coach Karen Barefoot uh, here at UNC Wilmington. And uh, if y'all are wondering, her energy is like that all the time. Uh, this is not just, just for today, I promise you. It's like that 24-7 um, all the time. But something I wanted to share is um, I feel like a lot of people feel like um, if they're getting into college coaching or if they want to uh, be a head coach, a lot of the time with me even being a young coach, the first thing you think about is, uh, X's and O's and how do you do those things but really the big thing that made me want to join coach Barefoot's staff was when I talked to everybody her brand is, is kind of what jumped out at me what type of person she was what she stood for and then when I came on my job interview was actually talking to players and talking to some of the assistant coaches everybody was pretty much on the same page you know what she's kind of saying today you know I heard high fives floor burns energy you know, wants to attack, pressure, all those different things. We didn't talk anything about X's and O's. You know, I asked questions. Hey, is she confrontational? How is she when, you win when you're winning and when you're losing? And it's pretty much what it is right now. You know, it's energy every day. She's always in a good spirit. She's the same person when you show up, no matter what's going on, whether you lost by 30 uh, or you won by 30, she's the same. You know, and the other thing was finding out, if the, uh, the assistant coaches, because everybody have those, their opinions, we have, all have our own thoughts, but finding out from the assistant coaches, you know, um, do y'all know what she wants? And everybody was pretty much on the same page about that. So for me, it was big, you know, taking the job to work for her, knowing what her brand was, what she stood for, and that everybody down the line uh, was on the same page with her. So, you know, I just kind of want to say that as a college coach, as an assistant and working for her, a lot of the times I think it's more important. Yes, X's and O's matter, recruiting matters, but I think it's more important to know who you are, what you want, and that those that work around you and know you know exactly what you want and what you stand for because it's easier to work for you and get the job done. So I'm gonna share uh, my screen. I pulled up some things on uh, my Synergy uh, editor here. Um, big thing that uh, the number one thing with our program with Coach Barefoot um, is is her energy. Um, that's very important um, with what we do. Um, no matter if you're you're in a coach, you're an assistant, you're one of the players, you're one of the ma uh, managers. Energy is a very big deal. And I put a clip on here just so y'all can kind of see. We had our first. Um, we we're playing Drexel, big game. Uh, UNCW hadn't beat Drexel in a while. We're down two points. Um, with a minute left, um, big defensive possession. We get a steal here, and we're pushing it. Gigi Smith, who was our leading scorer, is pushing up the Lacey Suggs. She drives it. She gets a layup. And I want everybody to just take a look at the bench over here. For us, you know, Coach Barefoot always says she wants uh, we people, not me people. And in moments like this, it just kind of shows you what our team's about, what our program is about. Um, and I wanted you all to see it. But energy is a very big deal with us. Um, from when you come in the office to work every day to when you come into practice uh, and the girls are standing on the baseline and Coach Barefoot's getting ready to talk to them. Uh, everybody needs to be in it. Everybody needs to involve, whether you're the best player or you're the 15th uh, woman on the bench. And y'all see we're up, we're celebrating. Coach Barefoot's hands are out. Y'all see me, I'm all the way off the bench. I'm excited about it, but that's just kind of who we are. Um, up to floor burns, with floor burns, um, that could be diving on the, the ground for a loose ball. That could be taking a charge. It could be turning the ball over yourself and going to get it. But we feel like possessions matter here. Um, our post player, uh, Paige Powell, is guarding the ball here. It's going out of bounds. You know, she's diving out of bounds to go get it. And you see Coach Barefoot's leaning over, picking her up, excited about it. That's just kind of how we are. You know, and if, if you're on the court for us and you're not playing like that, you can't play. We're down digging. If you look at Lacey Suggs right here, she's in a stance, guarding number four right here on this bottom wing, and she's down digging the dribble on the drive. Ball hits the floor. Her and the other player are going after it. If she doesn't dive, we don't get it, but she's valuing possessions. We get the ball, we got a possession, and we're off to the races. But I just kind of want y'all to see this. Um, here, we're just in a man-to-man, -man, just guarding, picking up, you know, soft pressure. 
Um, Gigi Smith, who's guarding the trail four right here, um, she's not supposed to jump the ball handler, but she does. You know, she jumps or she comes off a season opportunity, jumps, gets on the floor. Uh, just taking charges, just giving up your, yourself for the team is a big deal to us. Lacey Suggs, again, here, guarding the shooter coming off the screen. She's on the bottom wing right here, um, closest to the camera. Decides to go over, takes a charge, gives it up for the team. I don't know if everybody sees Coach Barefoot over here on the sideline, but this is her 24-7 all the time coaching with energy. Energy and effort, and it starts from the top. You know, you don't get players rotating over to take charges, you know, unless your coach is into it like that and you're working on it every day. Um, something that's really small that I think is a big deal in our program that Coach Barefoot talks about all the time, uh, kind of like old school. You remember how everybody uh, huddles up um, when you get fouled, when you're about to shoot free throws and different things like that. We think that's a big deal in our program. No matter what the play, running over, give your teammate a high five, going to pick them up, help them off the floor. Y'all can see everybody making their way over here. Um, that's big to us. After every play, after every possession, day of balls, um, after positive plays, we want to make sure that we're family, we're picking our sisters up. Lacey gets fouled on a three, everybody's coming over, giving high fives uh, to gather around her. It's a big deal to us. Here, baseline, uh, out of bounds here, same thing. She goes up, she gets fouled. Need everybody coming in. We're going to high five, we're going to huddle up. And if you watch us play and watch our film, it, it's all the time. Okay, and, and I just went back to a Delaware game, and you can see all these clips are close, but um, it's just something that we feel is very necessary to, to what we do. Um, high fives, floor burns, and energy. Every coach in our conference knows whether we have the best players in the league or we're just middle of the pack that year. They know when they play us, it's going to be a dogfight because we're going to always give effort. Um, we're always going to be playing together, being a family, and we're going to get after it. And our head coach is never going to let our team quit. So that's a big deal with us. Transition. I'll tell you this, offensively and defensively, um, our, our motto, kind of Coach Barefoot's brand and how she does things, we push in transition. We feel like the less amount of plays we got to call, uh, you know, the, the better. Um, obviously, we do have different sets and X and O things that we do in the half court um, and, and to, to, to kind of counter what other coaches do. But an overall view of things, we love to push the ball in transition and we want our, our defense to dictate our offense a lot. Um, so when we get it, we're gone. Um, we, we talk a lot about point guard attacks, where you get it from the point guard position and you attack downhill for scores. We talk about point the wing attacks, where you catch it, you pitch it ahead, you go score. We talk point the wing the trail, point to wing the post, point the wing back to point. Like we do all those different things and it kind of comes out in the game. So anytime we get a deflection, a steal, there's a turnover, we get it and we're gone. Here, Lacey Diggs, uh, CA grabs it. And Ayanna Vason, who is one of the faster point guards in the league, takes it, and she's gone coast to coast. Uh, that's one thing about us. If we have it, we're in attack mode. Mo digs here, and we're running. And the thing you'll notice about our team, there's always going to be two to three people, um, whether it's a steal or deflection, that are going to be down on the other end. We want to make sure we get them inside the three-point line on the other end. So here's a missed shot. Uh, she kicks it ahead to Ayanna, and we're gone. That's our – both of our bigs are kind of leading the break right now. You see Paige on the right-hand side. And uh, Carolina Busick is trailing right now. But we get it and we're gone. So you see a point guard attack. You see point the wing. You see point the post. But anytime we get a steal, and if you guys notice, we're digging on all drives, getting a hand in there and getting back. But when we get it, we're off to the races. And that's a big thing. We, we do different things in our offense. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you coaches on the call talk about drag screens um, and different things like that um, in, in your offense, in your transition offense. But for us, we, we do have drag screens, and we do do different in, run interference and uh, talk about switching sides of the floor and catching outlets on the nail and all those different things. But a big deal for us is if we get a steal, we get a deflection, we're gone, and we're looking to attack and run it down other people's throats. Same thing here. I think we're sitting in the zone. We, we swipe, get a rebound. We outlet it here to Ayana. She pitches ahead uh, to Lacey, and she's gone. So that's with us in transition. We're always looking to push. We're always looking to attack. Okay, and I'll skip ahead here. Nothing change Offensively, nothing changes for us. So press breaker, we have a number of different press breakers. Uh, this one is a typical one here where, you know, you have your guard to guard screen and then you roll back. Um, the screener rolls back to the ball. But we get it here and we're always in attack mode. A lot of people do not uh, press us for the simple fact of we're not shying away from it. Our guards are getting it and we're getting downhill. Okay, and this is Lacey Suggs looking here for a drive. Okay, but we didn't, we didn't see many people pressing us this year for this, this reason right here. We get it, we're gone. 
There, there's not much slowing us up or, or, or having us, because a lot of people press because they want to to lower the shot clock, you know, get you in a half court setting where, where you're rushing into something and you can't run your offense, but that's not us. And all of this just kind of feeds off of how Coach Barefoot is, her brand, and, and how she wants things done. So same thing here. Picture we get it back to uh, Mariah Chris and we're running. And I'll show you one more clip, team pressing us. But same thing, we get it. There's zone pressing here. It doesn't matter. She splits it, and we're attacking in transition. Okay, the other thing um, that I think is very important that, that I think Coach Barefoot does a very, very good job with in, in the overall, like, view of things um, is I think she puts players in positions to be successful. Um, that's something that, that I really, really uh, like and admire about her. I'm just going to show you a few different players, not necessarily all of our best players, but Ayanna Vazen, the guard that you saw, can handle it, can get downhill. Um, she's a girl who's, who's crafty, really creative. She's only about five foot three. She's not big at all, but she's crafty, uh, creative, super quick. Um, and coach puts her in a lot of situations to where she can kind of play and improvise. So you'll see her in some wing ball screens. You'll see her in some middle ball screens, but, but we don't put her in a box. We let her create and we let her play. You know, sometimes as coaches, you want to move them around like little little pieces on a, on a, a chessboard. But, you know, we just kind of allow the offense to open for her and we let her play. So this is her here passing it off. She's on the bottom wing right here. We're basically in a four-out set where we get her the ball in space uh, with a wing ball screen getting down here and we let her create. Big thing that we do is we put her in a, a tight ball screen at the top. And if y'all look at the floor, you'll see all the space for her to go. She can cross back here to go left. She can use the tight to come off. And the tight is just a regular, it enters into a high-low situation where one big rolls, like a roll and rise action. One big rolls, the other one rises. But here, we call the play and we just let her play. You know, she's crafty, she's creative, and we let her get downhill. Okay, even here, she goes for a layup, but she's got to kick to the opposite corner um, if she wants it. But, you know, she's a good player who's dynamic with the ball, so we try to not to let her get put in a box because nine times out of ten, uh, she's going to put us in good situations offensively. And as you see on the, the same situation here again, she's in the tight, she refuses it again, and she goes. But I'll show you a few clips of her just kind of using that. Okay, but it's something that we use a lot. All right, this time, instead of a, a tight, we use like a double ball screen action, and we just kind of, they hard hedge, it doesn't matter, we let her play. You see, she's a kid that can get down here. Okay, Lacey Suggs, that we just showed you. Lacey is a player that I'll tell you a little bit about her. When I came with my job interview, Lacey walked into Coach Barefoot's office just talking, talking, and her fingers like cricket. She's in the office with like a broken finger, you know, and she's walking around like nothing's happened. She's just a tough, hard-nosed player. Um, she's a kid that's all – she was all left-handed, couldn't go right to save her life, uh, but she was hard-nosed, she worked hard, and Coach didn't necessarily look at the flaw and not being able to go right. She's like, okay, how can we utilize her strengths you know, which I think is a big deal um, as to what I'm saying. Let's put her in plays where she can go left. She can post up also. Let's put her on the on the block, post up some smaller guards, and um, let's teach her how to be patient within our offense. So we're playing college with Charleston here. Right off the tip, we know that she's got a smaller guard on her, you know. So first play coach calls is to put her in the post. You know, and this is our conference tournament game that we end up winning before the COVID-19 situation happened, and we throw her in the block down here. So Lacey's a kid that we clear out. We run some weak side action on the backside to occupy the defense, and we throw it down here to her, and we let her play. Okay, I'll show you here. This is out of the tight action. Um, this time we're looking for Lacey. So we run the tight action, but we bring her back here, and we dive her into the, po into the mid post again where she can be isolated on the block. Okay, here this time she faces up, takes her time, enters the post, you know, spins, goes for a lay. But the fact that coach gives her this freedom to let her play, you know, I love that here. Like I told you, doesn't like to go right. So we give her the ball in the middle of the court on the right-hand side so she can turn face and go left using the ball screen. Okay, they hedge it. She gets the big switch and she gets downhill. Okay, but just like her, we know her strengths. You know, Lacey Suggs one-on-one -on -one with anybody, she's getting around because she's tough. She's hard-nosed. She's competitive. She'll drive the ball through a brick wall. You know, coach knows that, so she puts her in a situation and lets her play. Last clip here is, same thing, baseline out of bounds. 
We identify her strength that she can post and do different things. So even our inbounds play, we design for her, you know, so she can do certain things where she can be uh, successful. Gigi Smith was our most talented player. Um, she was about six foot guard that you could play literally through the one through the four. Um, so we used her um, in, in, in the middle of the floor a lot where she could just kind of improvise and play as well. Um, similar play here, we ran with Lacey, except with Gigi, it's a little outside of three-point line. And Gigi, ha Gigi has a little bit different gift. Gigi can shoot the three off the dribble. She can pull up. She can shoot floaters, spin, create, and, and do all those things. She's a bigger bodyguard as well, so she can post some too. We ran some, some brush screen action. We wouldn't run a play like this for Lacey. We would run it for Gigi, though, because uh, Gigi can get it going downhill. And if she's cut off going down here, sorry about that. If Gigi's cut off going downhill, she can make plays, whether it's off the pass, uh, step through, whatever it may be. So we pitch it back and get her downhill here. Uh, she can use right hand, left hand to finish around the rim. Same thing, put her in like a little pistol uh, situation where she could set a screen and then go off the flare. Okay, get it, jab here, shot. Okay, so one thing that, 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 like I said, really liked is that, you know, Coach Barefoot can identify, you know, what different players do and put them in different situations. Same thing here, showing you guys that Gigi can post on the block now. If you look, all these plays are in different situations where we kind of use her in isolation sets. Okay, um, something that I thought was pretty cool is we have a, a girl on our team named Jessica Munoz. Um, Jessica Munoz, if you're a D3 coach, a D2 coach in here, she probably can pay, uh, play for you. She can barely jump over a piece of paper. Uh, but she's a kid who can stretch the floor for us. Um, and, and Coach utilized her well because she's a high IQ kid, can shoot the three, um, and, and she's a locker room player, a locker room kid. She's always going to have your back. Uh, she's always going to rally the girls. She's always going to do great in the classroom. Um, and and she, she's just a great, you know, program player. This is her setting the screen right here, used her in some pick and pop situations to where she can catch and shoot. And she's another one of those tough-minded players you see here again. Same thing, pick and pop situation. Ayanna drives, finds her. Okay, but all of these players are very different players. You can see Jess out here popping to the perimeter. Same thing, spaces the floor, it goes in, and she looks for three. But this is something like I was saying about Coach Barefoot does a very good job, you know, in, in utilizing her players and, and not trying to, to, to put them in bad spots. We don't just sit there and run the same offices. You know, we do a lot of different things depending on personnel, and we try to put players in spots where they can be successful. Another thing Jess was really good at was being a zone buster. Um, when teams will play two, three zones um, and different things like that, you know, we'll put her in at the four spot. You know, we'll run a lot of high-low high action, rolling, rise, flashing, you know, so she can catch it in the middle of the zone uh, to shoot. So I think a big deal, you know, as far as, you know, Coach Barefoot and her brand besides – playing hard and competing and getting after it is, you know, if you give her a player or send her a player, she'll know how to use, utilize them and how to put them in, in, in a good situation for themselves. Defensively, same thing as offensively, we want to attack. Okay, so we do a lot of pressing. We do a lot of full court man-to-man. -man. We do some run and jump, different things. So I just want to show you a few of them. Full court man-to-man, -man, uh, our philosophy, we're picking up the ball. And I don't know if my – is in the way of them. And drag it down here so y'all can see it. Okay, but we pick up the ball full court and we get after it and we work on this. So um, we're big about skill development and I'm big with skill development um, with our guards. Um, even defensively at practice, we work on one-on-one -on -one full court drills, one-on-one -on -one half court drills. We work on um, two-on-two -two full court drills, three-on-three, -three, four-on-four, and we build it up. You know, coach will give 15 minutes to one end, 15 minutes to the other end. And I'll take the guards and I'll go, hey, this is how many times I want you to turn them in the backcourt. Then we'll go two on two and go, when they turn them in the backcourt, we want you to jump them. Then we'll add three and we'll talk about run and jump, how you turn them, how you jump them. And then we talk about the spacing and how you read it and how you rotate out of it. And that kind of leads to, to our full court defense. But here, Ayanna Vason picks the point guard up and she's turning her one on one. You know, and these things lead to things later on in the game where we're pressuring her early, but they don't know, you know, midway through second quarter, a jump's probably going to happen. But same thing here. Ayanna Vason, I mean, Mariah Chris, you see her is guarding the point guard, you know, and she's turning her. And instead of getting a steal, we don't get a steal. We don't get a steal immediately. We don't get a steal immediately, but I'll take you back to that clip. Um, we get the offense sped up. You know, with this style, you know, we understand that certain things are going to happen at times um, where you might give up a layup on the back end every now and again. Um, but 
you know, we try to limit that as much as possible. Yeah, the first time we get a push off, second time we get the offense sped up. And I think with our pressure, we really just want to get teams um, out of what they do. You know, here the point guard just looking to get rid of the ball. And, and you know, William & Mary is a good motion team, but now they're dribbling a little too much, picking up the ball. You know, we're denying everywhere. You know, we get it and then we're gone. Hey, Coach, let me talk one point. Go back to that clip real quick. All right, so I'm going to talk to you real quick about – uh, like Coach talked about skill development, stop it right there. So when we're – our motor – you know, I have to coach motor kids. People have high energy, all that, who are willing to work. And, you know, we've got to find those kind of players that are willing to work. Um, so the backcourt, we really call that the pressure zone. We really get after it. I mean, it is, it is all out, getting after it, making them uncomfortable. Um, so now when we cross the half court, we call the backcourt the pressure zone. Once we get to the half court, get right here. Okay, stop. We call this the cushion zone. Okay, so now we're really talking about matchups and we're talking about KYP. That means know your personnel. No. So now we may not, if we don't get that trap, we don't get whatever, now we're at the Seahawk right here. We understand the three point line, we call that the umbrella. Okay, the three point line, we better be in our matchups. And we hope that we can take some shot clock away. We hope that we've got them exhausted and tired, especially it's really good against a lot of system teams. And we'll change up things. We might switch and do certain things on certain players, depending on who they are and what they're good at. Scouting is a big part of what we do. But once we get to that three-point line and umbrella, I'll let Coach Rowe um, tell you, we either say you're a yellow, green, or red. So go ahead, Coach. Right, yeah. So when we get when we get in the in the half court, a green is someone who can really really shoot the ball, who can stroke it, you know. And that's normally your players that are shooting above forty percent from three, um, aren't great off the bounce, but can really really shoot it. Um, so we want to make sure, you know, different things. We're attached to them. Um, instead of being fifty percent, you know, in the midline uh, in the half court, we want to make sure we're more seventy five, eighty percent um, over to them. Um, also, there's different ball screens and things like that. If they're shooting behind ball screens, make sure we're going over them. Uh, making sure we're either showing on our heads or we're hard hedging them. Um, if they're yellow, that's typically the, the better players who can shoot the three, who can handle it, who can get to the rim. You know, you're all around kid. So we want to make sure that we're working on different closeouts um, with them, medium closeouts, high hands, and we're guarding them honest. Um, and your reds are typical players who are 15 feet and in, don't really shoot it above the three-point line. And majority of the time, they're drivers. Uh, so we want to work on short closeouts. Uh, making sure that when they do get to their 15-foot spots, um, we are guarding them inside of the three, you know, at the 15 feet. And that, um, you know, we're, we know and we're aware of who certain players are. So if you got a red out on the perimeter and that's making a skip pass that you're not running full, full blast at them, you know, to where they're taking you off the bounce and they're breaking, out, breaking down our defense and having us in constant closeout. Um, so here we're guarding the ball, pressuring it, like we said, full court man here. And we're trying to take them out of what they're in. You know, the ball is picked up and it's dead, and everybody's the turn, find their woman, and, and deny her the ball. Okay, and here we're doing a good job of that, and she ends up throwing it away. So that's really what our full court man is, um, to get people out of what they do. Like, here we play Hofstra, and we kept our big back. We're like, sure, throw it to the big, let her have it. That's what we want you to do. Get you out of offense, let her have it. And they're in a situation that not, they're not accustomed to. They ended up turn, turning the ball over. Okay, our run and jump is something that we went into later on in the season, but – here, we're playing Elon. We're down one. Um, Elon, very athletic, scrappy team. Um, we're, we're down one here um, with 28 seconds left. We've been full court manning them the whole game, but we haven't jumped them yet. So we decided it was a time to pull it out. You know, Coach Barefoot makes this call, and we're guarding. You know, Ayana's up pressuring the ball, gets a turn, because they think we're going to foul. Uh, we don't elect the foul. Gigi Smith comes, jumps her. You know, we get the steal, and then we're off. I think Lacey Suggs ended up here. Uh, getting an offensive rebound and getting fouled right here. And we go to the free throw line. But our, our run and jump, we pick them up. We try to get them turned towards the sideline. And then we turn. Like, 23 here has no idea that we're coming. But but big deal with us um, is our pressure. You know, we like to be up in your face, but we, we like to do it um, with intention, though. Like, here, um, they decided to clear out their guards. Um, they didn't want anybody behind the ball. So, um, Z Thibel, number 22, in the middle of the floor, um, decides to wait until she crosses, and then she goes to cut her off in front. She ends up pushing off, um, and we get, you know, a turnover there. So different ways that we do that. We also zone press. 
Um, you know, we'll get in a one, two, one, one. Uh, we'll get in a two, two, one, and we do those different things. So here we elect to go trap. We always take away the middle. We'll let you have the pass back. You know, but she comes, Ayana comes, she reads it, you know, makes she makes a good call here. Everything that we do, we're not just a team that pressed and run about, run around with reckless abandon. Uh, we, we like to stick to our principles. Even though we're trapping you, we're taking away middle because we're not trying to get beat deep. Um, here, Ayana makes a read in the middle to take away the back pass. They see it. They try to go middle. She turns on the Jets, and she goes to the middle to get a steal here. And, Coach, let me make one point. If you notice in that situation where um, she was anticipating Ayana, we always say the ball doesn't have a brain. So don't move. You know what I mean? Wait for a second so you can anticipate, because right now there's a solid trap going on. Go ahead. Yeah, and here, so she reads it and she goes and, and we end up getting it. You know, and these are things, like I said, that we work on, that we talk about. But the one thing you'll see um, in these plays, the players are playing hard. And if you notice the majority of our clips, um, our bench, our bench is always up, they're always active and they're always into it. And if you look at the assistant coaches, you'll see, Coach Martin standing up over here. You'll see Brittany Christian. You'll see Brittany Moores. You'll see Coach Barefoot into it. You'll see me up here, hands up, and we're into it. That's just kind of kind of how we are. That's our culture. Um, that's Coach Barefoot's standards, and, and that's what everybody follows within our program. Okay, and I'll show you the last clip, zone press here. Here, I think we're in a 2-2-1. Two, two, okay, Mo, Mo over anticipates a little bit. Gigi decides to still jump her in the half court, but then we get back. Okay, but by, by now they're kind of out of things. You know, point guard feels the pressure. Okay, and we're on the floor and we're after it. Okay, a couple of things I just wanted to say, though, is with every scouting report, everybody knows that you want to take some things away. Um, we do not double the post. Um, I know everybody sees it says double post. We do not double the post every game or anything like that. I just wanted to show a couple of things that we do. Um, you know, we see what people's offenses are, and we try to cut their main offenses. Uh, offenses. Um, we try to take like three things and cut it. Um, the better players, like we talked about with the green, the yellow, um, and the red, uh, we try to take away things. You know, we understand that at the collegiate level, you're going to play against good players. You're going to play against other smart coaches. And there's certain things that you need to take away when you're playing against teams. Like, for instance, um, we played Delaware this year, and Nicole Anabosi, that plays for Delaware, um, if she wasn't the best close player in, in the conference, she was one of them. You know, she won. Uh, I believe player of the year as a sophomore. She was a, a senior this year, but very, very good player Player that, that everybody in the league had trouble with. Um, she's going here to set a ball screen. You know, in the middle of the game, you know, Coach Barefoot's not afraid to lean over and make in-game adjustments to figure things out. You know, now we work on these things at practice, um, and, and you may have to pull them out, you know, in the game. So she sets a ball screen, and we jam her up early. Uh, we put our guard on her. We went four, guard, we went four guards, one post. Uh, with their lineup and Lacey Suggs that we told you about will run through a big brick wall. Nicole Anabosi is 6'2", and Lacey's about 5'9". We don't care. We know Lacey going to guard her, and she going to get after it. She gets here. She jams it, you know, meets her early, keeps her outside of the paint, stands her up, and we go and we double. You know, number 25 over here, um, average shooter, 22 to freeze, one of their best players in the bottom corner. And number two, uh, Gonzalez. Um, is over a 40% three-point shooter, so we don't want to leave those girls. So we let Lawrence pop to catch it. We close out to her late, and they're benched. They're standing up. They're elated, but that's the shot we want. Okay, we don't want Anna Bosi shooting it. We want her shooting it. You know, she ends up missing it before a tip, and we feel like we saved ourselves um, a possession. Uh, but we did, we did that a few times with her. I'll even show you here again. She catches it. They throw it in here. We stand her up. She catches it in the middle of the paint. Okay, we come. If y'all see Lacey Suggs this time the same way, the last time, number 20, Dickey wasn't on the floor, but she's on the floor this time. She's their worst statistical um, shooter, but a very, very good player, all-conference player. But we would rather her shoot it um, than Anna Bosi. She catches it, close out late, you know, and that's the shot they get. So those, these are just a couple of things that we may do. And I'm just showing you a couple of the better players in our league. Um, the point guard at William & Mary, you know, uh, Hodgson, the girl averages over 20 points a game, can really shoot it, can really handle it. So, you know, last year when we played them, you know, if she touches it, she's a kid that we're hard hedging or we're trapping. You know, we want the ball out of her hand and we work on it in practice. Uh, Mariah Chris, if y'all see her, her head is under the rim right here. Um, and her player has cut out backside to the corner. But, you know, clearly we've drilled this. So she's in the game and, and she's now just, just acting off what she knows. Instead of chasing her girl 
who's running up to the wing, she's anticipating a trap, and she knows the ball's going to come back to the post. You know, and she's been drilled. She's been taught. Let me meet her. Catch her here. Meet her. Keep her outside of the lane. Wall her up. And we're going to live with the shot from their other player as opposed to their point guard coming off a ball screen and, and kind of willing and dealing on us. You know, we end up getting a strip, getting a steal here. Okay, same thing happens later on in the year. We play another good point guard that averaged over 20 points a game for her team. Same thing comes off of it. We are hedging the trap. You can already see we have all three eyes on the backside, you know, looking. Gigi Smith, um, who's on the bottom with the long hair, uh, her player's over in the corner. She's not even watching where they're moving anymore. She's more focused on who this player is popping. Okay, she sees it, she goes, she closes out late. That's the shot we're willing to give up. You know, they shoot it, miss it, and then we're going back down um, the other end. But just kind of those things um, are kind of just what I want to show you all um, as far as from a basketball standpoint of, of Coach Barefoot's brand and, and what we do. I'm trying to get the – can everybody see um, the screen change? Does it say good offense here? Yes. It says yes. good offense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm popping this. So another thing that we do um, – and I'll show you when it pops up, is that um, we, we also meet with our players. Like, we meet with our players weekly, um, and we have um, individual meetings with them, watching video, watching film. We also do individual skill development on the court, but film is, is a big um, thing also in our program. Uh, Lacey Suggs is somebody that I pointed out, and I didn't even re -go, uh, redo this. It's just something I took from December. I, I think I did a, vi a video, a 15-minute uh, video meeting with her, um, just kind of watching her play, um, things that I like, didn't like, that we needed to fix um, going into the next week. And I uh, just wanted to talk to her. Lacey's a kid that, like I said, wants to go left every time. She, force, she forces offense trying to get downhill. She's not extremely patient. So uh, a lot of the time during the season, we would have to remind her, hey, this is how you get the ball in the offense. You know, you need to pick your spots, be patient. You know you want to go left. So sometimes set them up to go right, come back to your left hand then, like all those different things. So I would go back and show her, look, while we're running this play, you can flash, you can catch it in the pinch post. And I, I tell her, I'm like, I don't care if it's Diana Tarazi. You know, you walk around here with a broke finger. If you catch the ball at 15 feet, I don't know any player in the country that can keep you from the basket one dribble. You know, and I would go and I would show her these things. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. You know, there's certain things that she's very good at here. Catching on the perimeter, I would show in the offense, getting downhill, you know, scoring the basketball. But I would just go through and I would just show her offensively things that, that she did very well. Um, I will remind her, you know, a, a lot of uh, teams work on boxing out and different things. But when you get in the game, not a lot of people make adjustments as far as turning the look to find someone to box out who's standing on the perimeter. A lot of guards turn and watch. So I will remind her, hey, get in there, go offensive rebound every time we shoot the ball. Make sure you're running to the top of the CAA and you're going in there to rebound. And if you don't get it, you're at the top of the CAA, so you can turn and you can sprint. You know, you can get up the on the line, up the line for our transition defense. So here, you can see Lacey already is already thinking about it. Jess is back down looking at the ground. She's not thinking about passing to anybody. Lacey sees that. Lacey's in the top corner closest to our bench on the top wing area. And Lacey's already thinking about, I'm about to bust in here and go get a board. You know, she gets in here, sticks her nose in, and, and goes and gets an offensive rebound for our team and a putback. Okay, but this was in the middle of the season when I showed her this. Same thing. Her, her mindset is different because we talk about these things and we coach them at practice. Timber's got the ball. She's going to shoot it, you know, and we're running in there. We're crashing. Lacey's over here in the bottom corner fighting to get around somebody right now. She's not thinking about watching it, going to the, to the backcourt, and it's because it's what we talk about. This is a big part of skill development and an easy way for her to steal four to six points because, honestly, she's probably the toughest player I've ever coached. So she gets in and she goes and gets it and, and she gets a put back. And understand something too, and going back to what I said, it, it's about noticing people in practice who outwork people. Right. Because like I said, I didn't know who she was. I didn't know where she was from. I had no clue. I came into a workout. I didn't want to see their background. I didn't want to see their stats. Because building programs, I know sometimes you look in that too much and you kind of, that's like what you look at. And I'm not, I don't do that. So I kind of came in here seeing this girl break her neck for her teammates, win every rebound, every sprint. And she was a walk-on. And she has helped us turn this program around in so many ways. And you got you to gotta look at those players. I mean, you know, you can find those players that really, really work hard. She would have never thought she was all-conference, scholar-athlete, all these things. She just works very hard. Right.
and nine times out of ten, I will say this too, you know, something – Coach Barefoot is, is big about um, positivity. Um, a lot of coaches, um, when they want to work on things or, or um, talk to their players about, you know, the issues that they're having with them or the things they're not doing, the first thing you do is jump in a film session or start talking to them about what they need to do better. <laughs> Um, when Lacey was not offensive rebound and I went to talk to her about how she offensive rebounds, you know, like how she helps us when she does. So I'll go back and show her how, how good she was at the time when she was offensive rebounding and the positive results it was having on our team, as opposed to just saying, oh, hey, Lacey, you're not rebounding and showing her clips of her not rebounding all the time. Like I would switch it up some, you know, so she would want to come in those, fil those film sessions and feel like she was getting better. But at the same time, I would mix in and talk to her. It's always on. She gets it on an outlet, and she's pushing it. You know, she runs this girl slap over. You know, and this player on defense, is all, you can't even see her in, in the picture. She's already down in the lane waiting on Lacey to come. You know, she sees her here, and she's still – she's just going to run her over because that, that's Lacey. You know, so we bring her in, and we talk about those things and, and how she can be better, you know, in transition. Same thing, she catches it here. She sees the player in front of her. It doesn't matter. Lacey going to run her over. That's Lacey, you know, and, and that's something that that she's a kid that will always stick her nose in. You know, here it's one on three. They're already down in the paint. You know, she doesn't see Timber on this opposite wing wide open. That's a wide open shot that we have. But Lacey kind of has tunnel vision, you know, the type of player she is. So we'll bring her in and we'll talk about these different things. And then I'll show her some good transition. You know, the player once again is down the court waiting on her to come, you know, this time instead of ramming it, she takes it one direction. Like I told y'all, hates to go right, you know, but we'll drill and practice. Lacey, take a couple dribbles that way, then get back to your left hand, you know, and, and it leads to success for us on the other end. So you can see it on the flip side. So we show her when she's doing things great and when she's not. Here is the same thing. You got four players back, only one player. But the difference is, if y'all can see my mouse, there's no one over here in help. I'm willing to bet if Lacey runs full speed here and 12 runs full speed here, Lacey will beat her. She reads it, and she gets to the rim, and she goes and finishes. You know, so the, the little things that we'll show her, you know, with her game, you know, as far as that, um, we'll get in and we'll talk about her defensively. Um, she's one of the hardest workers, um, you know, but she has a tendency to stand and watch at times and, and get flat-footed. So we would show her this. We played Wake Forest at the beginning of the year, and we played them tough. She's here on the bottom backside of the defense and help right here, okay? Number one, who she's guarding, gets to move. And Lacey's standing here. She sees the help. She wants to cover down. But now the ball, because we teach you rotate over from here. Lacey would cover down here and not give up a layup. The point guard would sink in the paint here. Team defense, we don't leave off the, the same side post. Everybody did a great job. Our defense is there. But now Lacey needs to sprint and find her man. She's chilling. You know, her man is gone around the perimeter, and we give up a three. You know, college basketball players aren't missing that shot. So I would show her a few of these things. If y'all see here, here's Lacey down here. Okay, we don't teach to stand. Y'all see how she's standing flat-footed? We don't teach to stand flat-footed on the, on the backside of defense. She's two passes away, one pass, two pass. She should be up the line more so here with her right foot ahead of her left hand on the line with the basketball standing along this area, and she's not. So when the ball gets swung back, she's late, okay? She's still standing flat. She's late right here, okay? And she thinks she's getting ready to guard when really she should be more so here on the line. The pass comes. They run a brush screen. She's dead, okay? And we give up a shot here, okay? And, and we talk about these things here. Um, you know, and I, in a film session, I would say, Lacey, you're supposed to be here and deny already. So when they do come to run the brush screen, maybe when this, this pass happens, you can deny it or you can deny the handoff. But more importantly, you can see it coming. Yes, Gigi probably should have switched this because she saw her teammate getting beat. But if you're up the line and you're involved, you probably can yell at Gigi to switch it, you know, so you guys can be on the same accord to switch it. It doesn't happen, we give up a shot. You know, so these are things that we go back and I, and I would show her, you know, in film sessions um, that we would have after. So I just wanted y'all to see a, a couple of these. Um, good defense. I'll just kind of show y'all how Lacey is. She's one pass away. If you still see Lacey, Lacey's still standing flat-footed. There's just something that she struggles with, but what she doesn't struggle with is effort. 
Um, she's here. She one pass away. She digs on it. She dives here to get on the ball, to dive after. That's just the type of player she is. She runs back to get to deny. Okay, she jumps over here to help. She gets through a stagger. Um, we guard staggers different ways, but this time we trail and we threw. She trails through. Um, that's normally when we have someone who's not a great shooter. She get there and she can test the shot, and she's there. You know, good possession. You know, she was able to jump to help. She was able to get a deflection on the ball. She was able to dive on the ball, and then she was able to get through a stagger, you know, because of how she competes. Same thing, she's backside and help over here. Got a stagger coming, a high one above the uh, free throw line, so we're trailing it out. Okay, we switch it that time. She gets switched on a six foot two post. Big strong post she gets here, works, gets around, works to deny her. The big eventually gets around, but she stays here. She's solid in a stand and she works the wall up. And you notice how she's not swiping down, she's not fouling, she's making the big shoot over. Her, you know, and we'll show her, you know, how, you know, that was a good defensive possession and all those things. Um, but that's something that's big for us with Lacey. Same thing, ball screen, they set it. Um, I don't know if y'all remember DJ Williams, but DJ Williams right here is one of the best scorers in the country. Um, averaged about 20 to 25 points a game this year down at Coast Carolina, and Lacey had to guard her here. Okay, she splints through the screen, beats her to the elbow. Something that we worked on a lot before this game was this play and how she would catch it, go off the ball screen, and they would clear out the backside so she could drive this area here. And Lacey knows that, and she sprints to meet her at this spot and then stops and makes her shoot over, and she doesn't want to shoot. You know what I mean? So we'll drill all those little things and then go back in the film sections and show Lacey, hey, this is how we're going to guard this. This is how we want to do this. This is how you need to be better at this. So with Coach Barefoot, aside from high fives, energy, floor burns, um, family, and all those things, skill development is huge to her brand uh, with, with coaches. Um, watching video um, is huge with her, um, with her coaches, and, and just having a great relationship, you know, is big with the coaches. And something I also want to want to share with y'all, we do do coaching clinics as well. So in the fall, um, we'll have a coaching clinic. I think it's going to – Coach Barefoot is around the October area? Yes. Okay, around October, we'll have a coaches clinic that will invite all coaches that want to come to it. Um, if you're not able to make it, um, we will also be able to record it and send you video. And that will be more specific on, like, skill development um, and how we do things offensively and defensively um, with our team, whether that's ball handling, whether that's finishing, whether it's team shooting drills, um, whether it's team defensive drills. We work on all those different things. But I just wanted to share with you all yeah. um, how we do – how what Coach Barefoot thinks, and you know, as far as her brand and what she's about and how we transition that um, onto the court. Yeah, and the, and the clinic is free. 25 years I've done a free clinic because I don't believe in charging. This is the greatest game ever, and if I can give back and you can steal one or two ideas, then that makes me happy for you and, and yourself and your program. I know a lot of people like to charge. We, we, I have never done that. So thanks, Coach Rowe. This, I'll just open up any questions. I know we kind of talked a lot. We were excited about today, and hopefully this um, – you got a chance to, to just look, listen to us and how we do things, but anybody have any questions? I know we kind of talked a lot about a lot of different things, but feel free to, if you don't have any questions now too, is uh, to always email us, you know, um, we'll, we'll give our information. And like I said, I know we kind of, went through in depth about what we do because we take pride in what we do and how we do things. Um, I think Coach Rose is really, really good at skill development. He works with the guards. Uh, coach Martin is an experienced coach on my staff, a uh, longtime coach at Delaware. She comes in and she works with our posts and is really good on our matchup zone. Um, so we feel like we got some great things going on here and um, we just get excited every day to just try to figure out ways to put our players in situations where we can be successful. I think next year we're going to have one of the most talented uh, classes I've had. Uh, I know I, I sometimes you hear that sometimes, but I, I really do like the players that we have coming in. I think it's going to be fun and special. So we're really looking forward to playing that more up-tempo style, um, something I'm used to, to doing and building and winning championships. And again, we've never won a championship here, and we're on our quest to do that. So um, we're very excited about what's going on.
Coach, the last spot here. Um, I love the energy clips that, that was shown there. How do you, from day one, how do you get those kids to keep their energy up through the wins and the losses? Is it just from you staying consistent or um, how, how do you approach that? Well, I mean, that's a great question because that's something that we talk about from day one and we try to be consistent with it. I think that when you talk about energy, you talk about that every single day. Like when I walk in the locker room, I want people on the edge of their seats. If I see them walk through the hallway, I expect them to say hello with a smile. Um, when they walk on that floor, they better be sprinting to drill to drill. Um, and, and Coach Royal will tell you this, like, I, I, I do not put up with giddy up players. I'm not going to try to motivate you to play the greatest game ever. And if, you, if you're negative, then that's not the day. You're not going to be coming into practice, and you're not going to be with us, and you're not going to – I mean, that's, I just can't deal with that. Because I know that it takes a certain amount of energy um, for us. I know as a staff, we're going we're gonna to work our butts off to put um, our players in a situation to be competitive and, and to try to win a lot of games and even possible championship. So I think that you've got to hold your brand, and you've got to make sure that that – that is always number one. Even if it's a long day, if, like you said, even if it's a loss, you know, we got to go back and we've got to be able to fix things quick. Because sometimes you may have one rest day and then you got the next game and it's like you got you to get back on it. Um, and I think that every team I've ever coached, even 25 years, I think that we've always been the team to finish strong. Even going through injuries this year, we went through so much injuries. You got to give our team credit for fighting hard and finishing strong this year. And Coach Rowe, you know that. I mean, they never gave up. And players had to play certain positions, and we were under, we were just undersized and things like that. But that's when you got to make sure that you had your staff, you know, talking to them, breaking things down. And then as, a, as a, when I go into practice, I come up with creative ideas. Create, I come up with the most creative drills. I believe that I got to keep them on their toes. I always start off with a communication drill. I always start off with toughness drills. You know, we, we got to be able to set the tone because if I start off with something kind of low, low key after a loss or something, you know, whatever, and they just kind of come in here defeated, I'm not going to get anything from practice. So it, it's, that's a great question. So just trying to be creative every day to, to make sure that we bounce back quick. And I always tell them, I give them a bouncy ball and I put them in the locker room. I was like, this is life, you know? You know, like, it's, you're going to go down, and, and it's, it's about a bouncy ball. It's like that, you hit that ball on the floor, that thing's going to come back faster. Like, you, you throw that thing, you got to get back up. Let's get it. Let's go. You know, you can't sit there and put your head down. You can't sit here and worry about things. It's a lesson that you got to learn, and, and you just got to move on. And we got to be a, a team that, that buys in together and is ready to be motivated to get back up and go fight again. I want warriors. I want people to go out there and compete to represent you know, the letters across our chest, as we always say, the four letters across UNCW. Right. And Coach Scott, I'll say this as an assistant, just sitting there and, and being a part of it and, and just watching, you know, because um, I play a part, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it all goes back to the head coach with these players. Um, just watching it. Um, the morale is always good because let's say if you lose a game, um, we're not in the locker room talking to the team after the game for 30 minutes, screaming and yelling at them. Uh, that's the number one thing. We don't do that ever. Um, whether we win or lose, we go in as a staff, we meet before we talk to them. And, um, you know, Coach Barefoot wants a couple points that we need to get better at. But the first thing she does, and I've never had this ever as an assistant, and I've worked for a, a number of places, she goes in after the game and will congratulate and point out, you know, the players who who – did a tremendous job in helping us. You know, I've been in the locker room after a game we lost where a girl has played two minutes and came in in two minutes and got an assist and two steals and took a charge. And Coach Barefoot's in the locker room congratulating her, and the team is in there clapping like, good job. You know, we're not celebrating a loss or there's not any moral victories, uh, but the energy is always good no matter what goes on. Um, so after games, you know, we go in, we'll tell them the things that they did well. We'll celebrate those that, that, that don't necessarily play a lot that came in and helped us. And then we talk about what we need to do um, moving on the following week. Um, I also think just the every day of what she's saying, um, Coach Barefoot invites the girl over to the house. They come in, they jump in the pool. Uh, they go to her game room that she has. They, they'll come over and shoot pool. They'll throw darts. They'll play shuffleboard and they'll hang out. Um, she has an open door policy. Um, in the office every day, no matter what she's doing, 
You know, if she's working, she's doing whatever, she's not uptight. The girls can come in, they can talk to her, they can ask questions uh, and do different things as well. So I think the environment um, is kind of suited for that. But I do think on the flip side, let's say we played um, on a Saturday or whatever and we got beat. Let's say we're off Sunday and we come to practice Monday. It's competition day. You don't have time to sit around and, and sulk and pout and feel bad for yourself because if you don't want to compete on Monday, okay, you're just not going to play in the next game or, or this girl's going to take your spot. So they always feel like it's something that they have to get better at and, and compete with what they're doing. You know, I don't think there's anything like a magic touch to it. I just think, honestly, it's just when you're good people um, and, and you let the girls know you care about them um, and, and it's bigger than just the game of basketball, I think then everything um, excels on the court, you know, if, if that makes sense. Hey, coaches, I have a question for you. Um, as a team, you guys obviously play really fast and up-tempo, and I'm sure in your practices it's the same, up-tempo, fast-paced. How do you go about having fast practices but still taking time to slow down and teach stuff? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think that for us, too, is I always say that we have special teams. So we'll do a lot of special situations. Um, and not everybody gets on special teams, which is special um, offense and defense and things like that, which talks about the execution of the game. Um, and we, kinda, we track a lot of things in practice, I mean, constantly. I, I, I don't want to be a team that's just going like this, like Coach just talked about that. You know, we have a purpose in what we do. We want to win the special situations, okay? If it's an out-of-bounds play, if it's a side out-of-bounds play, if it's low clock, you know, if it's an execution on man or zone, like in a special situation, we are really, we know how to put our people in the right places based on the scout. Now, and every scout can be a little different, and that's why we spend a lot of time as a coaching staff really talking about that. But I do think that you have to teach them how to get up and go because you can get those plus possessions um, when you're playing up-tempo and fast. And for us, too, is it goes back to skill development, and, and, and Coach Rowe knows this. You got to be able to change speeds. You got to be able to stop. You got to be able to, you know, know when to slow down. Know when to, you know, okay, we need we need to settle down here. You know, we don't need to be up tempo right now. We, we we're up in the game, and you're working on special situations. Or even if you're down by one, but you want to get something good, and you want to get Lacey the ball, or you want to get Ca at the block because you know she's got a mismatch. We all are on the same page. And so um, you have to work on that. And I don't think you work on special situations at, just at the end of practice. I mean, we talk about competition day. We, we work against our scout guys. Um, I think that you got to also do it and, like, get into that middle group of practice where, you know, it, it's, it's – their brain is ready. You know, they're, like they're, – they're, they're engaged. They understand. Like, unforced turnovers are a no-no in practice. So we track that on the sideline. We call it bricks and saves. We say that you just do your job, doing your job is really, really important. But you can get a save by, you know, making a, a big time play, getting a big time rebound, a big time charge, that's going above and beyond. And then a brick is negative. It's something that, you know, unforced turnover, lack of focus, negative energy, things like that. And so throughout practice, our practice is pretty high intensity. It's a lot of good energy and they're locked in focus. And we don't try to go past about two, two hours, two and a half hours. I mean, that – because if not, you're going to lose them. And just like film, if, if we're in film session too, we don't like – if we're going to talk about personnel, and Coach Rowe knows this, we talk about – we're quick, man. We get in, we talk about the positives of our opponent, a few negatives, and that's it. Because their intention, their attention span is not there because they're always on their phone. Y'all know that. And their mind is like this the whole time. So we got to be creative in how we do things in film – and in practice, and especially, like you said, we got to be the team that execute the best. When it comes down to side out of bounds versus our opponent, we better win. If it comes down to out of bounds versus our opponent, we better win. If it comes down to low clock, we better win. We talk about those things, and we track those things in game and practice. Good question. Good questions. I 
have a question if I may ask. All right, good afternoon. I kind of jumped on this call a little late, so I hope, uh, apologize for missing anything. But uh, my question to the coaches is, you know, when you have a season where you are not winning as many games as you feel like you should, how do you encourage the players to kind of keep going and, and keep fighting through? That's a great question. And I'll let Coach Rose uh, start, and then I'll end it. Okay, I'll, I'll just say this. So it was a, a unique situation for me because um, if y'all know Coach Barefoot just finished her third season um, here at UNCW, and she showed you at the beginning of the call all the programs that – because she's worked her way up from the D3 level uh, to get here to be a mid-major Division One coach. And um, she's basically had to build programs, so she's been through this a lot. Um, for me, you know, I was at another program, and Coach had just came off riding high, took the team from last place to top three in the conference and broke all these records for home wins and top three in the conference in fan attendance. And then we had a lot of injuries and different things go on this year. Um, so we kind of dealt with a little bit of that, and I feel like we ended it on the high at the end of the year. Um, we went to our conference tournament. We're on our first round game. We're up 25 the whole game. We're pressing. We're trapping. We're getting steals. Girls are hype, ready to play. And I don't think anybody really wanted to play us in the conference tournament. Um, for me, um, I just think um, kind of like what we said earlier about just keeping the morale high of the team. And I do think in a situation where you've lost quite a number of games, something that was huge for us. Um, I don't remember what day it was, but Coach Barefoot gave our staff a call and we went up to the office and we sat down and she was honest with herself and where our team was and said, we're changing something now. I don't care what it is, but we all about to sit in here and talk and we're changing something. So she can talk to you about different things, but I do remember vividly, um, besides just the morale and talking to the girls and those things, we went we changed how we guarded certain things that we did offensively, you know, and, and we sat down as a staff and we figured those things out. And, and I think that really, really turned our season around um, this year because she, she was very introspective um, in, her in herself and what we were doing. And she wasn't too big to, to make changes or to do anything. So I thought that was huge for us. And then I also thought being positive with the girls, um, I thought, you know, changing it and having those, early Monday uh, practices that were competitive um, were a big deal. Um, and, and then I also think um, with us, we changed some things off the court as well, as far as like weight room and those things as well. So coach, I'll let you talk about it. No, that's a great question. And, and for me, a building program and being a part of uh, a lot of different programs is the fact that when, when you're losing, I don't say you lose, you learn. And I think that you've got to know, um, your team and you've got to trust your staff to sit there and say we got to stop the bleeding right now it's done it's done and I don't care if it's taking a player who started for x amount of games I don't care if whatever if they're not playing hard and they're complacent I'm not afraid to make changes and I'm not afraid to do something different and I think that you know that's where it kind of starts and you got to get creative with practice I mean for me you know I really got creative in competition days and I started to be where we were scrimmaging up and down and I was like okay if you score you got to get a stop and to keep your score you got to get a stop so it went down three possessions and so we're trying to get the most out of our players so they wouldn't want so I think that you just got to get creative and try to find ways to, to keep them competitive and again, trust the ones that are going to win over the locker room and the ones that you know they're going to be talking bad about the coaches or bad about the player, this and that. They, they got to be, you got to address them quick and you got to be able to have good leadership that people can be honest with you and say, hey, so and so feels like this or that or this or that. And then have those real candid conversations and be like, if you're going to be with us, but coach, I, you know, I was, uh uh, this is how it's going to be. This is how, if I can't get all of you, I want none of you. You can go pro, you can go put your bag up. It doesn't matter. End of the day, it doesn't matter. If you can't give that teal collar mentality, if you can't give that 110, do one more attitude, do one more than everybody else, then it's not going to happen. And we wish you the best. And I, you know, building programs, I've learned to, to do that. I'm like, I'm not afraid to do that. I'm not afraid to, to play somebody who hasn't played because they're ready. They're ready. And sometimes it's like the ones that you expect to do all this, sometimes they get a little complacent and they get a little, you know, 
chill mode, cruise mode, and it's, it's okay to put them in their place as long as you have a great staff that's going to have your back right. and that's going to say, hey, listen, coach, you know, you got to work harder. You know, like, you know, like, you know, you're not, you're not performing like we should. We got a tough conference, you know, like you, there's no possessions off. There's no days off. There's none. That's what makes it so exciting is the fact that when you play here, we play here. So I just think that communi- you win one conversation at a time. You win it all. Like one con- communication, problem solving is, is very, very important. Um, and so to me, that's kind of the fun part. I think a lot of people really kind of struggle, um, you know, with understanding their players or sometimes why does this happen and things like that. It's just coming back to you as coaches. You are the leader. You are the CEO. It's what you expect. It's, it's your philosophy. It's your core values. It's what you preach every single day, you know, and I think that you can't waver from that. And when you have that kind of winning culture and you kind of have that keeping them accountable and things like that and, you know, charting certain things and practices and sharing that at the end of the game, the day and say, hey, so-and-so was a practice player today. I know that I, we do that a lot and we, you know, oh my gosh, if you want to play, then you rebound and you defend and, and you bring energy. You'll get a few minutes. And we're not afraid to play those kind of players and sit some people down because we know that's going to give us energy. So, um, you know, I know I'm kind of rambling on about it, but, you know, it is tough when you hit that point where, okay, how do you turn this thing around? But trust me, you know, when you come in there and you, you show them your energy and you show them like, you know what, that's, these are some lessons. Like I just talked about five lessons for me to build programs. There's lessons here, you know, it don't matter what you have. You can make the most of what you have, even if it's little. And, and I, I'm a person, too. I don't care that so-and-so has this much budget. I don't care that they got a better locker room. I don't care that they have the, this player. It doesn't matter. In the day, we're going to outwork you. We're going to outperform you because we're going to play harder. And I think that you have to be true to yourself and what you're, you know, teaching and preaching every single day. So. Absolutely. Well, I mean, Coach Rowe has um, all the information. He usually, um, with uh, some of the clinics and things like that. Coach, you want to give him your uh, email or what's the best way? Uh, you? Yes, I'll, um, I see everybody was typing in, in the chat box. I need to. Yeah. Gotcha. And my email is my last name. So my email is Tubner. Um, and then it's my first initial. So it's T-U-B-N-E-R-R at U-N-C-W dot E-D-U. And uh, if you basically, if you need to reach us, uh, shoot me an email. Um, I can send you all information about clinic. We can talk about um, when the COVID-19 is over, uh, potential like campus visits and all those different things. Uh, but just email me at Tubner R um, at U-N-C-W dot E-D-U. Let's go. And, and, uh, and nobody quarantining with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just want to say thank you for you all, like, taking time to listen to us because I'm very passionate, of course. I know you know that and Coach Rowe. But, you know, my favorite quote is, um, if you have passion with purpose, you're unstoppable. And so what I would say for you is always stay passionate and, and love what you do, even if it brings you to like some disappointments or, you know, to your knees sometimes. I really do appreciate you just taking time and, and just, you know, listening because that shows me that you really care and that you want to do better for your programs or wherever you are with Basketball World. It, it seems to be like it's important to you. So thank you for being passionate about the game and trying to grow this game. And that means a lot to me.